What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we are diving into every single fault code that is possible on this FZ6. So I've got my manual with me today. We're gonna go through every single fault code that could possibly pop up on this bike, show you where the sensor is, how to diagnose it, and what the diagnostic procedure looks like for figuring out whether that sensor is good or bad, as well as providing the specs for all those sensors. So without further ado, Let's get into it. This one's gonna be a long one. I'll put timestamp markers down in the description for each fault code so you don't have to watch the whole video to find the one you're looking for. So check the description if you're looking for one in particular. Also, some of these fault codes, I've already done a video on them in great detail, so I'll link that in the description down below. Let's go. Our first fault code is number 12, and that is the crankshaft position sensor. Now, I've already done a video on this, so I'll link that down in the description below, but the crankshaft position sensor is just like any other sensor on the bike. There's a few common steps with all these sensors that you always wanna do. Check that the wiring harness is in good condition. Check that the coupler that connects it to the main harness to the sub harness is in good condition. Check all the plastic tabs on the couplers are in good condition, and make sure there's no frayed wires or a short from the wires rubbing against the frame somewhere. The crankshaft position sensor can be found on the rider's right of the bike behind this timing cover here. It's this wire right here that goes up and under there. It's just a two wire connector and the spec for it is 248 ohms to 372 ohms measured at 20 degrees Celsius. If you have really small hands you could probably disconnect the sensor from the side of the bike here. If not just pop the tank up and do it from underneath the tank. Rather easy job. Video linked down below. Next up is code 13 which, which is intake air pressure sensor. It can have an open or a short circuit. Just like the crank position sensor you want to check the harness for any fraying, rubbing, or shorting out. Make sure it's all in good condition. Check the connectors just like always. But as for actually inspecting the sensor you actually have to back probe the sensor when the bike is on. So essentially you're looking for 3.75 to 4.25 volts. You have to back probe the center wire, which is the black wire with the pink and white wire. This is the air pressure sensor right here. You have to back probe the black wire in the middle and the pink and white stripe wire on the right. Essentially you need to get a really thin wire, get it up in against the wiring harness side where the connector goes into the harness so you can see what the output voltage is of the sensor. This is just like a map sensor essentially for any car and you need the feedback loop. You can't just measure essentially what the sensor's resistance is because it doesn't offer that kind of spec in the manual. You need to see what kind of value it's returning to the ECU. So we got to back probe it with the harness connected to the sensor with the bike on. It's located here just under the air box on the rider's right of the bike. Next up is fault code 14, which also has to do with your intake air pressure sensor, except for this has more to do with a faulty signal. So this could be from a clogged pipe or a detached hose or also a stuck throttle position sensor. Code 14 is most likely air intake pressure sensor related problem, but also is possibly the stuck throttle position sensor. You can see there's this one vacuum hose. That little hose goes down to a connection of other vacuum hoses underneath the ITB rack. And it's possible this has come off, cracked, been cut or is pinched or has something inside of it for some unknown reason, but that's what you need to inspect. Make sure it's getting an accurate air sensing off the intake. Also, if that all checks out and that seems fine, then I would move on to checking your throttle position sensor. Next up is fault code 15, which is the infamous throttle position sensor, open or short circuit detected. Just like every other sensor, check the harness, check the coupler, make sure there's no frayed or cracked harness and wiring and causing out a short or something like that. But once you're past that, the throttle position sensor has two tests that can be done. The first is just testing for a static resistance. No adjustment the throttle position sensor just measuring across pin 1 and pin 2 on this diagram. Pin 1, pin 2, so the outer one. It should measure between 4 and 6 kilo ohms, so 4,000 to 6,000 ohm. No adjusting the throttle, just static test. The second test you can do is testing between pin 3 and pin 2. Pin 3, so middle, and pin 2, which is on the TPS just because I conveniently have one here. It's the center pin in the middle and the pin towards the injector side that you're gonna be measuring. And you're going to look for a resistance of zero at the like off throttle to 3.5 to 6.5 kilo ohms at 20 degrees Celsius at wide open throttle. You can also check the TPS condition through the diagnostic menu. It's diagnostic code number one. And at fully closed, it should be between 15 and 16 on the meter on the gauge. And then at fully open, it should be between 97 and 100. If it's outside those ranges or doesn't hit those values when you twist the grip, then you got a problem. Code 16 is also for a stuck throttle position sensor. You do the same process of going through what we just measured and checked. You can also go through the diagnostic menu. This is just a stuck one. If you went to the diagnostic menu and roll the grip around and the value doesn't change at all, it's stuck. The throttle position sensor can be found right here at the end of the ITB rack. This is rider's right on the bike. You have to remove the air box to get to this, but that's it. Down in there. 
Next up is fault code 19, which is an open circuit detected on the input side of the side stand switch to the ECU. Now, 19 is a doozy because it'll prevent you from starting the bike or riding the bike. Once again, make sure the harness and the coupler are in good condition. Make sure there isn't a short to the frame anywhere because, you know, it could rub. There's a lot of vibrations on this bike. All the info they give you for diagnosing the side stand switch is this image here. The image essentially says that it's two wires going in and it opens and closes the circuit when the lever is moved. My understanding is that when the side stand is flicked up, like ready to be ridden, the circuit closes and tells the bike that it's all good to go. Otherwise, it's an open circuit. So if you have a short to your frame, like the wires rubbed through and caused a short, that won't let your bike start. Or if the switch is simply unplugged or so dirty it can't make a connection, that'll also cause the bike to not run. I would just get my multimeter on the side stand switch with the harness disconnected, move the side stand back and forth, and if it doesn't change any values or open and close the circuit you've got a bad switch this is the side stand switch right here so just unplug it get your multimeter on here and see if it changes next up is fault code 21 this is a coolant temperature sensor open or short circuit but now we're going to look at how you check the sensor i've already done a video on this so i'm going to link that down below uh, but here let's look at the sensor values the manual recommends removing the coolant temperature sensor from the bike but that's a bit tricky in my video i showed you a way of testing it without removing it from the bike but either way the values are supposed to be 5.21 to 6.37 kilo ohms at zero degrees Celsius. So that's about 5,200 to 6,300 ohms at zero degrees or uh, 0.29 to 0.35 kilo ohms at 80 degrees. So as the temperature rises, the resistance drops. You can do that by either immersing the sensor in a bath of water and you can vary the temperature with the thermometer checking it for an independent measurement. Uh, or you can do what I did, which is essentially run the bike, get it up to temp, use some other way of thermally probing the temperature of the engine and then measure the sensor. Link down below to that video. The coolant temperature sensor is that green connector right there under the ITB rack deep inside the valley of the engine there. This is looking from riders right on the bike. Next up is fault code 22, which is air intake temperature sensor open or short circuit. Once again, check the harness, check the couplers. Checking the air temperature sensor on the FZ6 is a rather simple job. It's just a two pin connector and you probe across it at 20 degrees Celsius, you should read 2.2 to 2.7 thousand ohms. So 2200 to 2700 ohms, once again at 20 degrees Celsius. That is very important for this because the resistance will vary based on temperature. The air intake temperature sensor is this one right here, the green connector going into the back of the air box, just above the ITB rack and idle adjust. Next up is fault code 22, which is a problem with the O2 sensor. Strangely, the test for the sensor is to check the fuel pressure. To check the fuel pressure on the Yamaha, you need uh, this or this tool to basically get an inline adapter so that you can check the fuel pressure while it's still flowing into the bike. You should see 36.3 PSI with the engine on, start the engine, measure the fuel pressure. Now, the reason you check fuel pressure when you're dealing with an O2 sensor problem is because if your fuel pressure is low or high, it'll throw off the air fuel ratio coming out of the engine because it'll be pumping in more fuel based on the injector pulse width. So although this seems kind of weird and how it's like on a different system on the fueling instead of the exhaust side, this is what would primarily affect your air fuel ratio if it was off. This is your O2 sensor right here at the back of the exhaust of the bike, we're right at this bend. Now you want to make sure that the, the wiring harness is all good. If the fuel pressure reads fine or you've gone that far to check it, you just replace the O2 sensor. O2 sensors on many other cars go bad. They cause a bunch of different problems. So it's not a hard part to change. Just make sure you don't twist up the harness when you're installing the O2 sensor, causing it to live a short life. Next up is the lean angle sensor. This is fault code 30. This is a doozy because the bike will not be able to run or start if the sensor is bad. You would want to make sure that it is installed in the correct position because someone might have rebuilt this bike or put it back together with the sensor not facing up and that'll cause the bike to not run. Essentially, you don't want to run a bike if it's upside down because the fuel a fire hazard basically so this kills the bike if you ever have a crash and fall over so it shuts off the fuel system you can check the lean angle sensor in the diagnostic mode through diagnostic code number eight so click over to number eight when the sensor is upright you should see 0.4 to 1.4 on displayed on the meter and then if it's overturned you should see 3.8 to 4.2 it says remove the lean angle sensor and incline it more than 65 degrees so if you remove it from the bike and you can tilt it over more than 65 degrees it should read in that range and tell you it's overturned to my best understanding, this is the lean angle sensor right here, this thing labeled up. All you have to do is take off the side pod of the bike and it's right next to your fuse panel. So if you disconnect this from the bike, you just take out those two Allen heads, you should be able to roll the sensor back and forth and see it change on the display in diagnostic mode. If it doesn't change, replace the sensor. Next up, fault code 41 is lean angle sensor open or short circuit detected. This is very similar to code 30, except for this is a no normal signal. This one would essentially mean like the sensor is disconnected, the wiring harness has been cut, or something's happened to that because it's getting no signal 
or it's a short circuit happening somewhere. Code 30 is specific to no normal signal being received from the lean angle sensor. In comparison to fault code 41, which is the lean angle sensor has an open or short circuit detected. Next up is fault code 33 and fault code 34. We do them together because they are both malfunction detected in the primary wire of the ignition coil. So essentially on the primary side, it's having a triggering issue of the ignition coil. Your ECU isn't getting the signal to the coil or the coil isn't reacting to the signal properly. If you don't know, every coil has a low voltage side and a high voltage side. Your primary side is your low voltage side. But if you want, I've got a video down in the description about checking your ignition coils. It'll give you all the information you need about checking over the coils. For your reference here though, here's all the info you need to check the coils. The spark plug cap should be 10,000 ohms of resistance. That is just the cap that goes to the top of the spark plug pencil. Then the primary coil resistance measuring across the two tongs on the side of the coil on the primary side, the, the low voltage side, should be 1.53 to 2.07 ohms at 20 degrees Celsius. That's just ohms, not kilo ohms. And then the secondary side, the coil resistance should be between 12 to 18 kilo ohms. This is measured without the cap. So you take away the 10,000 ohm resistance cap. On both leads like this, you see no cap. That should be reading between 12 to 18,000 ohms at 20 degrees Celsius. The ignition coils can be seen, one right here, and then one's like tucked underneath that one, even lower inside the front of the frame here. And of course, the ignition coils lead out here, just behind where the spark plugs are up in there. You can see one cap right there that's the 10,000 ohm resistance cap. Next up is fault code 43, and this is the ECU is unable to monitor the battery voltage. This could also be a really bad battery that isn't charging up. Uh, but essentially the ECU can't get a read on what the battery voltage is. It's fluctuating too much or it's outside the typical range. You can check that going through diagnostic mode code 50. By going to diagnostic code 9, you should see approximately 12 volts. But what you do is you compare with the actual measured battery voltage if the battery voltage is low, perform recharging. So if your bike says it reads like 12 or something, but your battery reads 13 or something like that, that discrepancy is a problem. Or say this doesn't measure it, it gets 7, 6, 0, but the battery is actually 12.6 you got a discrepancy there, that's a problem worth investigating. I don't understand this incredibly well. The CO adjustment values on the FZ6 have always kind of eluded me. I've not really understood them, but uh, here's what you can do. You can execute diagnostic mode code 60 to check the faulty cylinder number. If multiple cylinders are defective, the numbers of the faulty cylinders are displayed alternating in a two second interval. You execute the CO adjustment mode and set the exhaust gas volume to the faulty cylinder to zero. If zero is displayed, set the numerical value other than zero. When the malfunction is recovered, reset zero. If this doesn't solve your problem, you replace the ECU, which is quite an unfortunate turn of events. Best of luck to you if you have this problem. Our very last fault code of the regular variety is fault code 46, which is power supply to the FI system. Relay is not normal. That's the fuel injection system. I've had this before. This is when my battery was dead and my stator was going out. Essentially, if you have a charging system issue, it'll throw this code. Once again, you check the wiring harness and ECU coupler for it to be in good condition, no shorting, no fraying. You have a bad battery, you check that. You might have a malfunction in your rectifier and regulator, or you have an open and short circuit in your harness. But I have a huge video on all the charging things that I'll link down below, so go check that out if you're confused or you want great detail on this. But let's look at where these things are on the bike. The stator is on the rider's left behind this cover here. It comes out these three wires here, uh, and I believe there are three yellow wires that meet up behind that rubber boot there. The rectifier and regulator is under this bracket right here. You can see the connector right there for it. To get it out, it's just an Allen head here and on the other side of the tank, and then you can drop this plate off and unplug it. To test your rectifier regulator, you basically turn the bike on, get a probe on the battery. You should see above 14 volts at 5,000 RPM, and uh, that's all you can do for the rectifier and regulator testing. I highly recommend if you're gonna replace your stator that you also replace your rectifier and regulator because they work in a pair. As for actually checking the health of your charging system, your stator coil should measure 0.22 to 0.34 ohms at 20 degrees. Many people, when they measure this spec, measure around one ohm. That's because they don't take into consideration the resistance of the leads on the multimeters. Most multimeters will measure the resistance of their own leads, which adds to your measurement. So you wanna try and remove that from your measurement as I demonstrate in the video linked down below. Uh, this is the three wire connection. They're all the same color coming from your stator. Lastly are the doomsday codes. One is fault code 50. This is for a faulty ECU memory and it may not actually display a code because it doesn't have a memory. And the first step is malfunction ECU, replace the ECU. Uh, I feel sorry for you if this is your problem. Also we have error one, error two, error three, error four. 
they, basically what they all say is make sure that the main harness to the ECU is connected correctly, check the sub harness on all your wiring connections, and the final conclusion on all of these steps is malfunction in the meter unit, replace the meter unit, which is your dash, or malfunction in the ECU, replace the ECU. Now, I have a suspicion why they all tell you to replace the dash and the ECU at the same time. I'm almost certain they communicate on a CAN bus system. They're basically saying meter first, ECU second. And that's a wrap on going over every fault code on the 2007 FZ6. This would apply to the S1 and S2 versions of the FZ6, so I hope that helps as many people out there as possible. I hope if you're watching this video, this helps you solve your problem and you can get back on the road as soon as possible because we need more FZ6 people out there having a good time with these bikes living many, many years off into the future. In making this video, I reflected on my early ownership of the FZ6 when there wasn't any videos or people out there talking about fixing the FZ6 and I'm just stoked to be able to provide this to the community to be able to share my knowledge on this so that more of you can have running bikes. And if you have any questions, drop a comment down below. I do my best to answer every question in as much detail as possible. As always, thanks for watching everybody. Please smash like and subscribe button down below. And as always, have a good day.